Hey folks, today I'm checking out the Intel Arc A380 graphics card, which is Intel's first GPU in the, well, a long time or ever really, depending on how you look at it. This is the first of the lineup called Alchemist, and this is their second to most entry level in the lineup, I believe. There's supposed to be some other products coming soon, but you know, knowing Intel, we'll see about that. Anyways, this card comes in at $140 US, and with that, it actually poses some interesting competition to some other GPUs on the market, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. So, I don't know, is it really worth the money, or should you wait this one out? Well, I guess I'll try to answer that in this video. Now, fortunately for this video, I'm not reviewing the ARC A380 alone. I'm going to compare its results across a few different cards, including, well, the RX 6400, RX 6500 XT, and its actual surprise cousin, the 8GB RX 6500 XT, as well as the GTX 1650, because I feel like these cards are probably the best comparison points for the A380. Now let's talk about the tech specs just a little bit here, since I figure people will be curious about that. This feature is eight of Intel's Alchemist XE cores, which if you don't know the architecture, it might be best to watch a video on the topic since that is publicly available information. But the eight XE cores translates to about 1,024 shader cores in different terminology, so hopefully that makes sense. Regardless, this features eight ray tracing cores, 64 TMUs, 32 ROPs, and a whopping six gigs of VRAM, which is two more gigs than the 6400, 6500 XT, and the GTX 1650. It is GDDR R6 VRAM on a 96-bit memory bus, so you do actually get a pretty decent amount of bandwidth, which is pretty nice. A little bit more than the 6400 and 6500 XT can provide anyway. The card is also PCI Express 4.0 compliant, so you can use it to its full extent on modern systems, but one thing that is absolutely required for a card like this is resizable bar, which has been tested, and it is a requirement, so if you don't have anything like 10th gen Intel or Ryzen like 2000 or 3000 series, or like a B450, X470, B550, X570 kind of motherboard sort of situation, the card is probably not going to be suitable for you. You probably should best avoid it in that case. But I'm not the one who said that. That's obviously Intel. So, you know, take their word with a grain of salt, obviously. There is one nice thing going for the ARC A380, if nothing else, even if the graphics part of it really sucks. It does have the media decoding up its sleeve, which it actually has a really good decoder and encoder built in. And it also supports AV1, which is a future codec, which is actually surprisingly good. And it has been tested to be actually pretty good on the A380, which is something that you can't say about the 6400 and 6500 XT that don't even really have the H.264 and H.265 encoding to begin with. One thing that I find interesting about the a380. I'm not sure if it's just the ASRock version and the gun ear version that was in China, but the card needs an 8-pin PCI Express power connector, even though the card itself really doesn't use, at least in my testing, more than like 56 watts of power. So I'm not sure if that's just there for future use or if there's something else that the 8-pin power connector actually needs to power the card. I'm not really sure. It's really strange. But either way, the card itself is actually very efficient and runs very quiet so pretty interesting. Maybe there's somebody who could explain the power connector situation to me. It's almost like the 6500 XT where you know, the standard 4 gigabyte VRAM version has a 6 pin connector, but then my 8 gig version has an 8 pin power connector. Could it just be that that's a stronger overclock on the card? Hard to say, really. Now, originally when I was going to test all these graphics cards, I was going to use this HP Omen 30L computer, which has a Ryzen 5 5600X CPU and 16 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4 memory. But unfortunately, it did not like the RX 6400 and 6500 XT, since I guess it doesn't like PCI Express graphics cards that run in X4 mode. Either way, I went ahead and I brought out another system. Now, this is a B550 motherboard as well as the Omen, and it also has 16 gigs of 3200 MHz hertz ddr4 memory but the cpu is a ryzen 5 3600 not a 5600x so i mean it's not really a deal breaker per se i mean it'll still work fine and i imagine that a ryzen 5 3600 would be the kind of cpu that the vast majority of people would use anyway so it's not really a big deal but i can't imagine that some of the performance related bits could be directly caused by the CPU in this case, but I think it's really not an issue because all these GPUs would easily fit within the budget of a Ryzen 5 3600, I believe. So we should be good there. 
Starting off our list of benchmarks, we have an older title GTA 5 here at 1080p with all the settings for the most part set to the very high quality setting. And the A380 did okay here with an average of 64 FPS, so it is definitely playable, but compared to the rest of the cards that I tested, it's definitely falling behind. And I know for a fact we can cut some slack to Intel here because this card is fairly new and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they'll probably figure something else out to improve performance in the not too distant future, but we're not looking at a very good start here, at least for this particular game. Although, I mean, really, you could lower the settings and it would be just fine, but I digress. Next on the list is Grid Legends, and I tested this game at the high preset at 1080p. Well, I guess all the games I tested at 1080p, so I should probably stop saying that. The A380 did okay here once again with 63 FPS on average and a not too bad 1% low that actually almost matched the RX 6400's 1% low. But again, the competition trounces this card, unfortunately, so there's really not much going for this one, but ultimately the game is playable. Next to Cyberpunk 2077 with the low preset, and I just changed the textures from low to medium, so that's the only toggle switch that I changed. No FSR here. And as you can see, the A380 is actually in pretty close quarters with the RX 6400 and the GTX 1650. In fact, it actually has better 1% lows than the RX 6400 here. So a good showing from Intel. It doesn't trounce the 6500 XTs at all, but it's definitely workable. And I think FSR could probably clean up the below 60 FPS average, but at the cost of image quality. Next is an easier to run game, Psychonauts 2. This is run at very high quality here with no image scaling. And unfortunately the A380 is at the bottom of the stack once again, but not unplayable in the slightest, but the 1% low was not that great. But yeah, it's definitely playable here. If you were to like cap the frame rate to 60 or 75, you'd have a pretty good time. It didn't actually stutter all that much, luckily. So it was a very stable experience, just not at the top of the pack where I think that Intel could do better here. Another easy to run game is A Hat in Time. Now this one I tested specifically because it runs on DirectX 9 and I know for a fact that the A380 would struggle with this because, well, it struggles on anything that's not an Nvidia card, even though the 1650 didn't do a very good job here, but I digress. So for those who don't know, the A380 actually doesn't even run DirectX 9 natively. It actually runs all the DirectX 9 video API calls to DirectX 12. So I figured there'd be some kind of overhead doing that. And indeed it's playable here, but it's still at the bottom of the stack in comparison to the other cards on the list here. So yeah, I mean, I'd have to see what that does in other DX9 games, but that'll be another topic for another day if you guys are interested. All right, finally, a slight win for Intel here in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I set the settings to use ultra textures, but everything else I forced to medium and I set all the sliders to pretty much halfway or as close to as halfway as I could get them. Again, no image scaling here put in place. And as you can see, even though it's a very slight win by like about two FPS or something, the A380 did beat the GTX 1650 here. So not too shabby until you just need to keep up with those driver improvements. And I think you might have yourself on to something here. That victory was short-lived though. Watch Dogs Legion and yeah it's back at the bottom of the pack here no surprise at 56 FPS on average with the medium settings and no motion blur but I mean it's not that far off from the 6400 and 1650 here but those are mainly capped by their VRAM capacity not necessarily because of driver limitations so it's kind of a moot point here but again Intel fix your drivers you have something good here you can make this faster <laughs> that's what I'm preaching basically. Now, I went ahead and I tested another non-AAA game, and this was KO the Kangaroo. This is the 2022 remake that came out a little while ago, and they are still patching the game. So this is version 1.4 that I'm testing here with the ultra preset and high anti-aliasing set. And the A380 was not far off from the 6400 here, actually surprisingly close on the average. But again, its percentiles kind of fell off a cliff and it can't match the other cards on this list, at least not quite. So unfortunately, we're back at the same thing again, where Intel's drivers are probably holding back the card here. And lastly, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I tested at the high preset at the same resolution, of course. And unfortunately, again, the A380 is at the bottom of the list here with 53 FPS on average. Although, curiously, the 1650 and RX 6400 were even in the averages. I'm not sure how that turned out, but whatever. So, 
Yeah, the A380 is not a bad card per se. Like you can manage your settings and make things work with it. And it's definitely capable, but Intel's just got to get to work on those drivers. I think that they've got something here with the hardware. It's definitely very capable, but they just got to eke out that last little bit of performance from the drivers. And I think they've got it. Now, as I hinted at the start of the video, I mentioned the A380 sells for roughly $140 US, at least for this ASRock Challenger ITX version. And I think for that money, it's actually not the worst. You actually get a lot of GPU for your money here, especially in the video decoding and encoding department. I think that it excels there and probably would be worth it for streamers who just want to stream an AV1 on a supported platform. It would actually help wonders in that case. But just talking about the card itself in a bubble, or maybe inside of the bubble even, we'll get to that too. The card itself has a lot of potential, and I believe the hardware can exceed the entry-level RDNA options, or RDNA 2 specifically, sorry, with the 6400 and 6500 XT. I think the A380 is in pretty good competition with those in particular, or maybe even the older Turing cards, because let's be fair, Ampere's kind of on its own thing, and it's also way too expensive in comparison to the A380, at least as of the time of this video it is. And I believe that Intel can really be an underdog here, and I think they can make something work with this card, but they just got to fix their drivers, and they just got to get the performance out of this silicon. Because our control is kind of a buggy mess, although it's getting better slowly. Stability is, well, questionable at best, let's just be fair, because I've had to test with two separate computers to finish the benchmarking data, both computers of which were GPU bound, by the way, so the results from both machines didn't affect the data that was shown today. But they just got to figure out the stability. They just got to make it to where you don't have, like, after a few hours of gameplay, you have a huge problem where you just can't even launch games anymore because the whole computer seems to have a tainted Windows install. It just gets annoying after a while with some of the things that I've dealt with with this card. And I just want to believe that Intel knows what they're doing and they're going to figure this out. I mean... I'm going to cut them some slack here. It's obviously a first-generation product from a company that, well, really hasn't made a discrete GPU before. And so I don't want to be too hard on them because it's a first-generation product. There obviously is going to be some first-generation issues. And them saying that their iGPUs have been around for a very long time is not an excuse to justify why this has the problems that it does, especially with market share. Until you can shut up about that because iGPUs don't count. But I digress. I just... I want to believe that this can be good. I want it to succeed in its own way. It doesn't have to necessarily be NVIDIA and AMD day one. That's not really the end goal here, obviously. I just want it to be another option in the market, which it technically is. It obviously is out there for sale. You can buy one. I just wish that Intel would get the little things right instead of worrying about all the features that the competition has. The biggest thing that they need to do right now, and I agree with the Gamers Nexus opinion on this, is they just need to figure out the performance and the compatibility and the stability. And they just need to nail those things and get that figured out first. And then maybe you could start introducing features with the second generation because honestly, consumers are fine with that. As long as it plays their games, as long as in this case they can record their games, and as long as it doesn't crash their computer and cause a problem with even launching games and not being stable, as long as they can get that stuff figured out, they can knock out those bugs, I think they've got something here. And then you can focus on the ray tracing, then you can figure out the AI upscaling, then you can figure out all the other features to catch up with the competition, and then you actually have a lot more value going for your brand. But... As it stands right now, I mean, if you can find it for any kind of sale compared to the $140 US price that it's going for, at least as of the time of this video, it could be a very interesting proposition as long as you have a modern enough computer. But if you're talking about another computer that's not up to the same specs, like it doesn't support resizable bar, doesn't support maybe PCI Express 4.0 even, or if you have games that this just simply doesn't excel in the performance in, well, unfortunately, the competition is still just going to be a better value for you, and the A380 just kind of gets set aside, which, again, is not necessarily a bad thing for a first-generation product. I think that they can make it to where it can catch up with everybody else as long as Intel just fixes their drivers. That's really the big thing with this card, and then once they do that, I think they've got a winner here, and especially when it comes to the ARC 5 and ARC 7 tiers of graphics that are eventually going to be coming out in both mobile and desktop variations, I think that they can knock it out of the park. And then if they can figure out all the issues with the first gen, 
and then take those and make the second generation better if they're already figuring that stuff out, I'm sure, as they probably are on the back end. They could really become the next, like, revolution, I guess, or not revolution, maybe revolution. I was going to say evolution, but, I mean, that's kind of iterative because, let's just be fair, I mean, there's already good graphics out there, so what is Intel going to make different than the other two? Well, I mean, the biggest thing would probably be price, but I digress. So what do you guys think of the ARC A380? Do you think it's an interesting value proposition or should it be avoided in favor of NVIDIA or AMD for the time being? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts down below. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. That's the end of this video. So if you like what you saw, well then hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it so much, well then the other button exists too. Get subscribed down below because I do upload rather infrequently. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. So thank you all for coming to watch and I'll see you all hopefully in the not too distant future. Yeah.